Welcome back to Seek Strength and welcome back to Seek It Stand. People with weak legs. This episode is brought to you by the Seek Strength training app. The Road to Near Part 1 and Part 2 are on the Seek Strength app on iOS and Android. Links below. Head on over there. Multitude of great features. It's what you need for less weak legs. Now, first up, we've got She's Young snatching. He said, I am back. He's got a blue tick. I he think, is back. I think he's snatching. 160, we're not sure. We don't get to see the full plates. What we do know is he's wearing odd shoes. What I would say is this is 160 plus. Equal to or greater than 160. The odd shoes are not it. I don't know. I See, we've got 120, 315s. Dara thinks that's a blue, which I'm inclined to agree with. So that's 140. No, that's 160. 160. Sorry. 160. So maybe we've got some whites on the outside. So at least 160. Yeah. It looks like it's heavy 160. Doesn't it look like it's there's some gravitas to that barbell? It's the way it moves after the hip for me that leads me to believe it's at least 160 kilos. His star position is so kind of <sighs> weird, isn't it? I I don't know if I'm being thrown off by the odd shoes on this one, Gurf. He's like super far back in his heels, like he's mm. pushing all the way back behind them. But the the king of the 73s is indeed back. Hopefully it'll be interesting to see what he does in competition. We, due to Olympic qualification shenanigans, we haven't really seen him in his final form since the Tokyo Olympics. And, of course, Ram Matt has been setting some crazy clean and jerks. So, it remains to be seen what's going to happen. I'm confident Xi Jiang will reclaim his throne. And I would say he'll reclaim it with, with ease, I'm going to say. I feel like he'll just he'll just take it. I feel like he's going to reclaim it with a second attempt on boat lifts. That's what I feel like. I think he's going to get so far ahead in the snatch, mm. yeah, that mm-hmm. that the rest of it just isn't yeah. isn't going to matter that much. Yeah. Now, speaking of someone who's back, who I was always kind of skeptical of, but to be honest, but that was months ago. So anyway, <laughs> Carlos Nazar is in the Bundesliga and he clean and jerked two hundred and fifteen kilos, and he is looking pretty pretty good. Carlos has looked pretty good since we started seeing him. To be honest, hasn't he? He always just looks powerful and strong. You know, people have said he's pretty good at weightlifting. Yeah, and he is pretty good. Some would say he's a world champ at weightlifting. My big thing for this, so obviously it's great to see Carlos lifting. Uh, it's great to see that 215. But aside from all this, it's great to see the Bundesliga doing so well and the crowd being absolutely hopping. Well, the Bundesliga always do really well and they do yeah. two things that are vital to sports. Alcohol. And the second thing is having a club to identify with. So everyone there has an identity, not just a country, but a specific region that's a little bit more local to them. And then when they go watch these, there's a sense of connection with it. There's alcohol with it. And both of those just play off each other. And they play music. They have a slightly different system. It's not just the heaviest weight. We see kind of teams battling it out. They they do it really well. And I think weightlifting would benefit from that. He's tapping his calf. But the, the alcohol just can't be... Just can't be forgotten about it. No, you really can't. It looks like a darts tournament, doesn't it? That's what they go for. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What I'd really like to see is this, but on an international scale, where you have international teams traveling around doing these meets and in that kind of match format where it's team v team, not necessarily one lifter versus the other lifters in their weight class. Doesn't Germany have a really like solid lineage? There's a lot of history. Like they have their, their crests and they've got their kind of places and obviously a bit of, you know, some bad history, but uh, don't they just have that real like sense of like Germanness? Yeah, you know they're absolutely really they German. They have a big sense of regional placing as well. Yes, like there's there's a lot of regional pride in Germany. Now speaking of place with a lot of lineage, we've got Rakui is back with one fifty power clean jerk, full clean jerk, and he is our next up and coming young star in Japanese weightlifting. I absolutely love how good these jerks look. I thought you were going to say, I love his quads. No. Does not. Do you love his <laughs> no. quads though? I do love his quads, but not as much as these jerks. These aren't, there's certain jerks I really like, which are like incredibly powerful. They look like a sports car taking off in launch mode or something, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't even make sense. But typically those people have a push press within 20 kilos of their split jerk. In this case, I feel like he doesn't have a massive strict press or push press, but the jerk just looks crispy. What I really like is that because his arms are quite short relative to the rest of him, the barbell just gets into his hip 
Now, that's not what you need to do, and it's not even preferred, but it does make the turnover look nice and sharp because it keeps the barbell so close to you, which he achieves quite well in those cleans. And that gym looks amazing. Gym I love that there's little cubby holes mm. next to kind of each mm-hmm. platform. It's such an interesting design. That's not something you'd really think of doing, to be honest. No, I absolutely adore how that gym looks. It's almost impractical with the width of the barbell. Yes, but it still looks great because there's wood everywhere. Even the little directional fans you can get pointing just at you when you're training. Mm-hmm. Lovely touch. I bet it's toasty in the winter. Mm. Well insulated. Now, next we've got one of I'm Julius's athletes, or Julius's, who's famous for a kind of coaching or, or well known in the wavesing community for Heidland Diaz. He's got a lifter here who's, whoa, 13 years old. Squatting 200 kilos at 73 kilo body weight. The thing which immediately came to mind, and we talked about this on channel a few weeks ago, we are chatting with Gabriel and somebody was asking Gabriel, oh, do you think I can squat 200 kilos? And Gabriel mm-hmm. says, yes, I think it's possible for you to squat 200 kilos. And I think Gabriel said he did it when he was 14. Yeah, I think And he was- wasn't sure about 14 or 15, but it was definitely around 70 kilos body weight as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just insane levels of genetic talent. Yeah, I pr- I think he said like it was. I think he said fifteen, and then obviously, I think it was his best ever basketball was two eighty or two ninety, but he could have done way more than that. But I don't think they ever let him or he ever had any desire to do it. But this is two point seven times body weight at thirteen years old. That's almost incomprehensible. It's crazy. I I'm not gonna lie, that spotter is just. That spotter needs to back off. Oh. Is the spotter wearing a belt? He's wearing a belt, but he's also wearing a headband. I assume he's <laughs> he's training with him, which is fine. But just, I hate waving coaches do that so much. And it seems to be very common in Asian culture. Yes. Please don't touch the barbell. I feel like, and this might be a bit misplaced, but I feel like it's a bit of proving your worth as a coach. Doing something like yeah. <laughs> that. Real important that I'm right here, right with you right now. Yeah. I really don't. Um. One, I don't like it is because technically you're applying some force on the barbell. If like there's something there which is just defeats all purpose of lifting, I suppose. But let the lifter have some confidence, you know. Or if you really need to spot them, spot them from the side, get two people. I don't love that the the barbell spotting position. But even in this case, like he's a foot taller than them, he could easily stand back have his hands out, apply enough force to the bar to really be a safe spotter without having to have those hands tucked in there, nestled in, you know? Yes, the inside grip as well in between is is Yeah, you really extra. don't need that. Now, speaking of someone who's a massive squatter all the time, we've got Kay Demar with clean two front squats and a jerk at 205 kilos. Kay Demar is, of course, a 89 kilo lifter and he is just... Demolishing this 205. <laughs> it's the ease the front squats go up at is the crazy thing on this. Yeah, we were talking earlier as well about his lockout. Not a huge fan of this extreme wrist kickback or extreme wrist extension in the overhead position. It's not the most stable, but it does allow you to get that barb a little bit further behind your head. But Kedemar, very short arms as it is. You know, and a super wide grip. Like, he's pinky seems to be on the rings there. You know, it's uh, it's not the most stable overhead position for a really heavy jerk. Definitely not, no. The problem as well with that kicked back wrist is just just how much neural inhibition is going on when your wrist is in that super flex position. Sorry, super extended position. Your body really doesn't want to be taking a lot of force through those tendons, you know. Kedemar, of course, is wearing the gold loser jeans, which are something that they sent to everyone by the looks of things. And a lot of them, too, seem to be still wearing them, which is quite interesting. So they uh, must be a good shoe. I know Yasmin was saying she really liked them. I feel like we're going to see a pair of new antas on you soon. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I just kind of want to get the gold and black ones. Hmm. Now, here we've got Ryan Grimsland, one of the stars of American Weightlifting currently, with a 200 kilo hip clean. I think we've seen a 200 kilo hip clean from him before. He said slowly getting back into the swing of things, which is a, uh, that's a great place to be if you're just getting back into it. <laughs> America really is the home of the hip clean. 
Yes, they yes they love it. The hip clean and freedom seem to go so well together. Just <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's uh, I don't particularly love it. I don't love the hip snatch. No, really don't love the hip clean either. No, it's not a, not massively useful, but it really seems to be a, a kind of mainstay in their programming. And as a country who don't have kind of main structured federations or they certainly don't have a kind of national team coach who does everyone's coaching, it's strange that all of them love the hip clean or many of them do. Yeah, generally what happens with the the hip clean is you see people will jerk down into that kind of knee bend position or into this power position and then we'll see them using a lot of oscillation from it and it gets, you know, naturally their lifters play with the barbell and use the oscillation they try to make it as dynamic as possible and they figure out ways whether consciously or subconsciously to get around the barbell and then you end up with this kind of bent arm position to get the barbell into the pocket because you can sit there and when you dip down you get a little oscillation then you can turn it over slight gentle lighter warm-ups are fine a tall clean could be preferable but the uber heavy maximal or super maximal hip cleans just i just don't think they're that productive to be honest Still up massive weight from Brian Grimson. Next up, we're actually back in Japan. We have got one of the female lifters. And I don't actually know who she is or what she weighs. But any non-super female lifter squatting 200 kilos is an event to always be taken note of. Especially high bar to full depth. And it's a crazy, crazy weight to be lifting. So this is a lovely squat, obviously at crazy impressive weights, but there's two things I think people can really learn from this. So the first thing is you'll see as she walks back, the second her foot plants on the floor, she starts squatting. There's no extra hanging around, particularly when people are going for their kind of heavy singles, heavy doubles, heavy triples. They tend to hang around there for a bit longer. And it's normal in all sports for pre-performance routines to take longer as the demand of the skill increases. But in the case of the squat, the longer you're hanging out there and the more breaths you're taking and the longer you're taking to get that brace in, the more fatigue is building up and the less drive you're going to have. So that's the first thing I really like. And the second thing is just how good her timing is on that bounce out of the bottom. Like really, really controlled on the descent, but not slowing it down to the point where she doesn't use the oscillation of the bar and that stretch shortening cycle to really drive up as effectively as possible. I can't think... I don't think I know any female weightlifter that I know in person that I know well that can squat 200 kilos. No. That's actually crazy how mm-hmm. much... That's actually an insane way to be squatting in terms of just how many other female lifters can do it. Next, we've got Peter Asnoyak with one of the most beautiful 160 block snatches you'll see possibly ever. Peter is, of course, a Belarusian weightlifter and the Belarusians are notorious for their mid at the knee or below knee block snatches and block cleans. It just has to be said that anybody with that level of upper back extension makes everything look good. Mm -hmm. You can do a squat with slightly dodgy form. If you're that extended in the upper back, it looks great. Particularly stuff from the blocks looks great here because you can really pull into that extended position and then the catch position is kind of already set up for you because you don't have to go through that first pull where you're really pulled out of position. But these look gorgeous. Yeah, it's... Normally, the amount of upper back extension you see or the kind of rib flare or thoracic extension you see, usually it's synonymous with someone who's a really bad overhead position. They don't have the range of motion and they kind of compensate into it. But his, obviously, is perfect. Like, he's a, a perfect overhead position. So it's interesting that he just has that range of motion. It's just kind of individual differences, you know? You know what these blocks make me think of? You know, an anchor man when he's, like, talking about diversity. It's an old timber ship. <laughs> <laughs> these blocks look like they're the portholes for an old timber ship. Yeah, they've seen a few big lifts, I would mm. bet. Now, speaking of an old timber ship, we've got, from Blade Weightlifting, we've got a 68-year-old retired Chinese athlete snatching, power snatching, 70 kilos. It is rodonkulous. Just the speed of that is good. No, the way he drops it, it's like yeah. he's warming up to snatch 100. Don't you feel really good? And you're like, yeah, I'm on fire today, and you slam. You just kind of move. You just want to get it over with. Yeah. There has to be some, you know, people are talking about body weight snatches. There has to be a point where your age becomes an impressive weight to snatch. Is that 70? Is that 60? Who knows? So what goes? Does he have a knee discrepancy other than that? He looks fine. 
man. He's <laughs> Come 68 on, years man. old, power snatching 70. The fact that he's able to do anything with 70 kilos overhead at 68 is just, just ludicrous. Uh, this is, yeah, it's incredible. He must have kept that up. He obviously never let it go, like, recreationally. He must have kept chopping away at it. The other thing I absolutely love here is his training partner next to him. Looks to be around the same age. <laughs> Top off, belly out. He's definitely like, yeah, go 75. The go 75, it's it's there today. Yeah. Next, we've got Yuki Hara, who is, I believe, is still on 81. And we've got this beautiful 230 kilo front squat from Japan. Very, very handy. Maybe 235, maybe 240 there. So speedy. I kind of... This is unfair, but I hate those massive fives. <laughs> They just don't, they look like the remedial fives. They look like the technique fives, you know? Yeah, they do. It's almost like it's discrediting the lift a little bit. Like, have the little fives on. Make it serious. Like, this is big business. This is 230. This is massive business. Most people who lift any kind of weight will never come near 230 for anything, let alone a front squat. Just imagine how this good this would look with 425s on each side, then a two and a half and a clip. I would probably pick smaller fives, but... Just the white fives on the outside. Anything, where do you even get big fives like that? Uh, they're, they're existent. But big skinny fives, you know. I know they exist, we're watching it, but <laughs> but where? Where does one purchase those? Not so I can know not to get them, you know? You know what? No, I don't know. I'm going to... Tell Something me. else that isn't right is those tri, tri, tri-legged, tripedal squat stands. Are you having a strong? They, <laughs> they are not right. They don't feel right. They don't feel nice. They're not stable, no matter what anyone tells you. I gently moved my squat stands, my H stands at home, just a tiny bit, and now I've hit it so many times. I've never once hit it in like eight months, <laughs> and now I've hit it like three times in one session. It was actually session with 240, and it's because I moved them slightly. And you know, you just do the same mm. thing over, and you don't even think about it. It's the step in the dark almost. Do you feel like a blind dog running into a coffee table? <sighs> this is not where I left it. Next up, we've got Mitsunora Kone, Kone with... Something I've never seen before, which is a snatch grip trap bar. And I just can't imagine the purpose of this, realistically. What I can imagine is why this would be terrible for your first pull. Yes. Like, the the big problem... Is this a Japanese weightlifter, girl? Yes. So, like, the big problem with all weightlifters is not getting their knees back out of the way effectively in the first pull and not getting the barrel to travel back in the first pull. And particularly with the Japanese style technique where their knees stay forward and they're very knees forward and quad dominant, this is just going to make all that worse. Yeah. The only minor benefit I could really see is the kind of use of your legs you get. So you can kind of turn it into a squatting motion. So if you had the issue with not pushing with your legs, I could see it teaching you that a little bit, but it's not something you want to get into the habit of using, you know, it's uh, it's going to change the balance of the lift. Like, if this is for an athlete or something and you want to do wide grip hex bar deadlifts, maybe if you could mm. give a good reason, I don't know, but certainly for weightlifters, I definitely would not be using this. Next up, we've got John Hack, who recently made his return to powerlifting after a little off-season in Strongman. And he's back with a 1,007.5 kilo total at 89.7 kilos. And fucking hell, that's strong. 362.5 kilo high bar squat. You know, I know we've talked about people's off seasons and a lot of the time you see people going doing something novel in the off season. It doesn't serve them too well. I think it's safe to say in John's case that off-season did not serve him poorly. Well, he said he had a lot of injuries later in the prep, so I wonder, did it all add up? Mm. So, he still won, but the, the hunt for 200 or 2,300 pounds is still out there, you know, but he looks more jacked than ever in the same weight class we always see him in, you know, but he's such a loser. He missed a 260 kilo <laughs> bench press, you know, what a... Whoa. Look, what a, this is pathetic. Like, why was this even on the new show, to be honest, now that I think about it? <laughs> so sometimes yeah. you see people wearing singlets or like people might be wearing those gold Lu Jean shoes and you're like, do you really deserve that? Mm -hmm. But John Hack can definitely wear a Captain America singlet and deserve every inch of that. Yeah, 395 kilo deadlift as well. Again, not even over 400 kilos. So I mean, <laughs> super pathetic uh, performance from John. Like it's 
that's ridiculous to say. What's his body weight and height, though, is a real question, I think. You know, what, we, that's what we really need to know. Now, crazy lifting from John. I I hope he can kind of clear up on those injuries. What's crazy is John, I'm certain, is still in his 20s. I'm almost certain it's going to no be way. mid to late 20s. Almost certain. So, typically, we see powerlifting kind of peak, you know, unless they just fucking rail gear. Even, you know, if they're taking just, even when they're on gear, you know, kind of... 30s, mid 30s, mm. depending on who you're going with. In some cases, even late 30s and 40s, it, depending how they wanted. Like Stan Efton, for example, I think he was 44 or 45 when he set his world records. So, you know, I think John has it there for as long as he wants. So that's crazy that he's, you know, what is he going to do? Where is he going to go? The other thing I think is crazy with John is just how effectively he seems to peak every single time. I think something we really commonly see in professional powerlifting is people making these big long preps and long term plans and they're not always turning out as well as they might want. Or maybe their squat will go well, but the deadlift won't go well. John seems to deliver every single time. Yes. Yeah, he's just an all rounder. Yeah. Yeah. Jack of all trades and master of all of them as well. <laughs> Jacket of all trades. <laughs> so speaking of master, certainly, yeah, he's a master of this particular profession. Jesus, Jesus de la Vera, Mega Gojira, squatted 463 kilos for a single, only a little single, not even doubles anymore, in, I don't know, is that a commercial gym? I can't imagine it does, it has like powerlifting racks in place. Not surely not. A very nice looking powerlifting gym, 463 kilos, bada bing. It's the level of control on the way down here, he's just, you can almost see him counting in his head. Just squeezing, 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 bang, and smashes it. Yeah, even the walkout looks pretty pretty handy, mm. pretty cash. For something that's over a thousand pounds. Yeah, and when you put it like that, it does sound <laughs> does sound even a bit crazier, doesn't it? 463 kilos. Even when we've seen like Ray Williams do massive squats, and obviously he's a phenomenal squatter, it doesn't look that run of the mill, or that pedestrian with the walkout, the level of control. Mm -hmm. No, the... Jesus is is the squatting man at the moment. I don't mm -hmm. think there's no. There's a lot of very strong people, but uh, I think he's he's kind of he's heading for something massive here. Like this looks like f what? What could you put even? How much more could you put on this in comp? You know, like there's maybe another ten kilos, and it's a very small percentage to add ten kilos. So for most people, ten kilos in your PR is a lot, but ten kilos at that weight is kind of is at the minimal. Yeah. Next jump, like it doesn't even make sense. But he, even when it, it the weight is that much, usually you see like twenty kilos or forty pound jumps. The it's funny at the end he shows he pulls up his pants and shows that he's just wearing knee sleeves. Yeah. Obviously, even Mega Gojira gets haters in the comments. Uh no, but to be honest, if he was wearing wraps under his knee sleeves, it wouldn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same as squatting like two hundred kilos. Then. You can you can do that in weightlifting. You can wear whatever you want. Now. Yeah, that's what I like about weightlifting because they know cause it's not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we got Mason, who we've been following for the last few weeks. His little progression in his squatting. Uh, he's little. He's little squats. He's <laughs> three hundred eighty kilos for a single oh here. God. He can definitely squat four hundred kilos. Look at this. Look, Mason's not that far off from having a resident spot on the new show at this point. Only Lee Sang gets a resident spot in Formula Entra <laughs> Antropath. And Lee Sang didn't even get his spot today because he... Oh, he actually did. We missed him. It's too late now. We're on the powerlifting section. It's a lovely looking squat. It's, yeah. We've obviously seen him for the last three or four weeks squatting massive heavyweights. It's unbelievable how consistent they all are. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, these are... I'm not sure how many days a week he's squatting, but these are all heavy training days. And they all look great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, phenomenal squatting. Now, sick of massive squats, we have got Lugo Ovoy. Butcher me. Tell me I said it wrong because I probably did. But here he is squatting 450 kilos. That's kind of high bars while I look at this, but it's a really nice squat. Ram 4s. Uh, raps in a competition and it's fucking damn nice squat I'm just going to say it now if you're a big dude that's probably how your squat should look yes if you're kind of over 6 foot tall 110 120 plus kilos 
this is how you should be squatting. This is as aesthetic as the squat can be. Yes, if you're, there's a good chance if you're a large boy, you've got big hips, big ass, big quads, maybe a big belly, you do need to make that space by pushing out with the knees a little bit, you know. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of opening up with the knees, but you're trying to get to that parallel position. And if you're a big boy... And he is a big boy. You're a big dog, and you're trying to squat 450, you do have to open up a little bit to just balance everything out, get your hips in between, get below that parallel position. A lot of upper back arch, or it appears to be, you know, he seems to be in a quite an extended position, and more so as he descends. The other thing I absolutely adore about that squat is no excessive weird squat spotters with their hands under his armpits or trying to rub his nipples or anything like that. Nah, in Russia, if you die, you die, it's over. <laughs> but they have two guys on either side of the bar. Obviously, they're going to grab it and it won't crush him if it falls. They don't need somebody behind him well, they whispering in his ear. But, yeah, there's no one uh, just a cup of his boob. He looks like there's another 10 kilos in that as well. Like So it's crazy how many people, how strong everyone's getting. It's crazy. Just everyone's so strong. Strong people everywhere. There's a couple of strong guys. Sticking up strong oh guys. My God. We've got two of the strongest brothers I can think of. I would think they would give... The Stoltmans. The brothers a run for their money. We've got Maxon. That one rep Max again. Made it last week and he's back here. Because he squatted 352.5 kilos or 777 pounds. And he's a uh, boy... His brother Sam in the background, and do you reckon the seven 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 was? Oh no, it's six six six. It says the devil's number. Whoa! Isn't? Don't say that out loud. Jesus! Uh, Fucking this hell! This squat is so good. Bat plays this new show now after this. I know we talked about him absolutely burying squats last week, but it's so nice to watch, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. The uh, the brotherly love is great as well, you know. Yeah, I love that. No, he's just nailing it. This is so legit. Yeah. And I know it's not fair to talk to powerlifters like that and be like, look, you, it's a competition. We always say it. And there's powerlifting rules and you play by the rules to win and you exploit those rules. But this is so legit. <laughs> no, it is just, it's just better. Like. Yeah. It's, it's, it was as far as the new show is concerned. <laughs> yeah. Where there's no rules. This is, it's it. Like, you know, there's just. No, in Sikistan, this carries more weight. Like his hamstrings are touching his calves and it's. You know, it's really... It's, it's got to be said as well, just a pair of SPD knee sleeves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That means a lot. Yeah. Now, here we've got Alba Bostrom. Uh, I'm not sure of the particular inflections of the O in whatever Nordic language this is. But Alba, I'm confident, has said right. It's sumo thing, 220 kilos... 63 kilo body weight and 22 years old so yeah it's insane if you're getting into those 200s as a female powerlifter at any body weight it's mad impressive i feel like female not even female powerlifting but female deadlifting in the last two years has exploded yes absolutely massive weights i don't see it in the bench press as much i do, you see it a bit more in the squat but in the deadlift and particularly the sumo deadlift it just seems to be popping off you know, what's seemed to pop off a lot is lighter, natural female powerlifters for a long time, up until kind of, you know, 10 years, plus or minus a few, female powerlifting was largely reserved for enhanced female athletes. Mm. For better or for worse, whatever you want to make of it, it seems to have opened up a huge amount now, specifically the IPF style or the IPF competitions to likely unenhanced female athletes you know yeah and it's uh it's it's great to see for everyone to get involved no absolutely very interesting to see where their numbers have gone in 10 years like we're seeing men's numbers going now next we've got <laughs> this is a bit of a, a controversial one but i'm out of comments Dar's not sure if it's real i think it's real joseph tumbarello with i think this is the heaviest bench press we've seen on the new show it's 311 kilos 685 pounds in a commercial gym now i'm not gonna say i'm hesitant okay what my concern was that bar didn't bend a lot i said don't we often see that commercial gym barbells don't have any whip they're often very stiff right. yeah they're not good steel what they tend to just bend and stay bent that's the thing so i'm wondering I'm not I'm not saying it's fake. I'm just saying a lot of barbells bend a lot more, even in the unrack, they tend to bend a bit more. He does have a pretty wide grip, which would certainly take the bend or the whip out of it. Yes. One thing I'm not a fan of is people in the comments 
saying, oh, he bounced it off his chest too much or there's too much more me- momentum or that momentum is the same as benching 200 kilos with a pause. It's simply not. Like, the only thing that matters is just being able to bench press it. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's just dumbasses who yeah. don't understand anything about lifting. That's just fully, like, you have no fucking clue. But it, I just, yeah, it's interesting. This is definitely the most controversial lift on the new show this week. He does say on TRT as well. So that's probably more of what I would be <laughs> sceptical of. Here, it's nearly 700 pounds, Gareth. And, you know, it's only for the fact that he's saying just TRT where you're like, mm. oh, it's when you call things out and when you keep saying things like that or if you do say things like that a lot, that's when you're kind of giving people ammunition or stuff to say about it. You know, if you just posted this, you don't have to say just on TRT. Mm-hmm. You know, you're still enhanced or whatever. Look, he's massive and jacked and in great shape. Like, there's a guy... Who, Bounce, bounce, bounce. Yes, I'm a fat fuck. <laughs> okay, we can just stop reading his comment there now. Yeah. He, he's talking about bounce. Uh, I'll take my perfect form, slow, non-bouncing lift of 405 when I was 253 and was lifting. You didn't do that. Shut the fuck yeah. up. Like, yeah. No, if this is real, super legit. It's certainly, yeah, it's an interesting. If anyone knows any more about this lift or about Joseph, I don't know. I think we've had him on the new show before. I'm in, I'm I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is about those comments. Nobody comments on like someone on their holidays in Spain and saying, you're such a loser. I went on holidays to Mexico last yeah. year and it was so much better because my holidays way better than yours. Just leave people alone, will you? Stop commenting the weird stuff. So speaking of stop commenting the weird stuff, Graham Hicks, famed strongman from the UK, Posted a 310 kilo front squat with a safety squat bar. And the top comment is that's not 310. I think he knows if it's 3 fucking 10. Like, I think he knows what he put on the barbell. He's a professional lifter of heavy things. I'm sure of all things he's able to tell you how much weight that was. No one gets to 310 and be like, shit, it was 315 or 305. Like, sh- shut the... Oh my God. No, this... Um, it's We're talking about this squat variation. So front squat with a safety squat bar. I think this would be super useful for strong men, mm-hmm. big dudes, and particularly for rugby players. Like, we see a lot of rugby players struggling with that front squat position and struggling with that kind of more upright torso, but they need that kind of anterior dominant uh, bipedal big heavy exercise, which a front squat would be great for. I think this would be a massive option for a lot of rugby players, football players, hockey players, anything where you're getting a lot of impact. And you need to be big and strong. Someone said, why do you squat front squat with a safety bar? And he said, chunk reasons. <laughs> now, speaking of female performance and female deadlifting, we've got Brianni Terry deadlifting 291 kilos at 75 kilo body weight. I think this is, and that's what they're saying, Mark Bell is saying, the heaviest deadlift ever by any woman in any weight class in the sport however we as you've seen on the show we've had lucy deadlifting 300 maybe more than 300 like an elephant bar in a deadlift but this is certainly confined to powerlifting i think is the heaviest deadlift yeah and probably powerlifting without gear without a deadlift suit or, or anything like that yes incredibly impressive deadlift i think so obviously females really make the most out of that really wide uh, grip on the bench press and that massive arc but they're really good at getting into that super externally rotated position for the sumo deadlift as well mm-hmm. which is why I think we see so many great performances and obviously we've really good athletes like this coming up through the ranks but incredibly impressive yeah frightfully impressive crazy lifting 75 291 you know any, there's any male pulling that would be very very impressive so. <laughs> absolutely so that's crazy now big kev We've seen a new show before with some big squats. Big Kev is a thrower, and he's finishing Squat-tober with 206 for six reps on the front squat. <laughs> he's using the strapped-in method, which is perfectly acceptable, and he is flying through these front squats. Nah, Big Kev deserves that title of being Big Kev. Yeah, and he can call his October Squat-tober if he's doing this. What I really like as well is on all of those reps, he stays super upright. A lot of time, particularly we see with non-weightlifting athletes like throwers, rugby players, football players, as they get deeper into those squats, they tend to just hinge forward and they're strong enough to hold it back and they'll do the extra few reps. Kev stays super vertical and upright. What I really like is Big Kev does things that throwers always do and they do everything as fast as possible. <laughs> Whatever they're doing, sets of six, front squats, doesn't matter. They just go 
as fast as they possibly can, which I think is great. Mm. Big fan of that. Now, this goes, Dara's most impressive thing he's seen this week, he says, and this is Blanche behind the, bo- behind the back clapping push-ups for five reps. That doesn't even look real, Gar. That is insane. You know, that's the one thing you can't fake. Planches without a green screen or something. Well, planche clapping push-ups is <laughs> you behind can't. the back clapping push-ups. You know, this is something I didn't even consider a thing to do. No. Like clapping push-ups, everyone thinks about most people can do them or lots of people can do them, but mm-hmm. planche clapping push-ups first of all, but behind and body clapping planche push-ups is stupid. <laughs> It doesn't love, even make sense. I love how he, like, landing back in the planche is the craziest part of that. Imagine how sore that must make your shoulders. It could be that his shoulders are so well accustomed to it, it doesn't hurt anymore. Like, you're so robust from doing that shit. That does not make sense. Next, we've got Anna De Silva doing what we call, call the Trower's Hang Power Clean with 305 pounds. So that's 137 kilos she's a thrower we call this the chores clean because they need to move heavyweights fast this is more than acceptable and the comments are absolutely brutal this is heavyweight moving very fast and that's all they need to do yeah and there's people saying this isn't conductive to the type of adaption she's trying to achieve uh, <laughs> the the only thing and it this goes for most other sports like this where you got somebody using an exercise that comes from somewhere else Every single good thrower in history has done stuff like this. Mm -hmm. This is definitely the adaptation they're trying to achieve. People, you'll see people and they'll be like, oh, you should be doing heavy kettlebell swings instead. Like someone saying absolutely no advantage in sports performance when you double bounce a clean versus getting set and exploding vertically with a smooth pull and explosive catch. What sport do we do a double tie bounce? So this is so, like, that's so far off the mark. All that matters is the weight is moving fast over a reasonable range of motion. <laughs> Technique doesn't transfer in terms of an attribute development of power. For her, all she needs to do is move this weight to a reasonable range of motion. She needs to contract and relax, and the bar needs to move fast. That's all that matters here. It doesn't matter about technique. It doesn't matter about weightlifting technique. It doesn't matter. She did six bounces. It does not matter as long as it happens. The, uh, <laughs> the next comment then is, whoever screaming, do more weight, should be ashamed or sorry, embarrassed. The University of Georgia should be ashamed if this person is head coach of Georgia. The only thing a university cares about is that girl winning medals. Big medals. And that's all that matters. Yeah. This, this is, is a great hand clean for a thrower. Super fast. Like the catch scene is perfect. Transfer and turnover. The only thing wrong with this is the double bounce. But what would be the difference if she did... A hang pull and then a yo-yo clean into a hang power clean. What would be the difference, realistically? Uh, delusional. Like, we don't coach people to do that side of the way, but it's not a problem. If I got a thrower and he was doing that with 180 kilos, I'd be like, yeah, good job. The only thing that matters is you make that 190 kilos. Finishing with a horse, we've got South Africa's strongest man, Breno Nell, deadlifting his first 400 kilos from a max of 300 kilos only six months ago. I'm happy with this. And I love this because there's just zero technique. He's just literally pulling, picking the barbell up. This looks like, and I know I said this to you earlier, Gareth, 